Session 2 An Introduction to the Qur'an Part A All thanks are due to God, Lord of creation, and His blessings may be on the Prophet Muhammad and his family. I have been known among my peers regarding my reflections upon the Qur'an. These reflections are not meant to explain the Qur'an. Rather, they are a collection of moments of clarity that a believer might have regarding a verse or a few verses of the Qur'an. If the Qur'an were to be fully explained, then the Prophet Muhammad would have been the foremost authority to explain it, because it was revealed to him. However, the Prophet explained to his companions what was appropriate for their time. He clarified all the responsibilities, duties, and rights of a Muslim that result in reward if properly carried out, or punishment if mishandled. So all the believers since the time of the Prophet had equal and clear access to this knowledge. However, when it came to all the other matters regarding the creation and the secrets and treasures of the Qur'an, the Prophet shared from his knowledge as much as the minds of his time could comprehend and value. The purpose of the revelation of the Qur'an was not to reveal scientific explorations or to explain the secrets of creation. These matters remain hidden in its verses and are revealed in their proper time. It is when the scientific minds are active in search and study of such areas that God makes these verses shine with their true meaning. This makes each scientific revelation in the Qur'an more appropriate for its time and more impactful, as it is delivered when the scientific minds are ready for it. The Prophet left the explanation of the Qur'an, which is not related to matters of duties and religious law, to be revealed by time. The Qur'an is God's words, and God calls its verses ayat, which in the Arabic language means signs. It is the same word, ayat, that God uses to describe His creation in the universe, such as the sun, stars, life in all its forms, and so on. God Almighty says, In the creation of heavens and earth, and the alternation of the night and day, and the ships which sail the seas to people's benefit, and the water which God sends down from the sky, by which He brings the earth to life, when it was dead, and scatters about in it creatures of every kind, and the varying direction of the winds, and the clouds subservient between heaven and earth. There are signs for people who use their intellect. Chapter 2, verse 164. So these signs are present both in God's creation and in His book, the Qur'an and with time one will explain and complement the other. Now, let's look into the meaning of the word Qur'an. In the Arabic language, Qur'an is derived from the verb read. It means the read or the recited. The use of the word Qur'an is restricted to God's revelation to His Prophet Muhammad for the purpose of guidance and proof. God also refers to the Qur'an as the book. The Qur'an is always preserved in the minds of those who memorize it and on the pages of the holy text. So when relating to the revelation in its read form, it is called the Qur'an, and when relating to it in its written form, it's called the book. Historically, as the Qur'an was being collected and written down in its book form, two rules were implemented for writing down each verse. The first rule required that two people who have memorized the verse be present, and the second rule required that the verse was also found written down by one of the Prophet's companions. These two conditions were met for each and every verse in the Qur'an except for one. This one verse was found written down, however, it was only memorized by one companion, so according to the rules, this verse should have been excluded from the book. But here comes an incident that shows the wisdom and mercy of God Almighty. This particular verse was memorized by a man named Khuzayma and no one else. 
The scribe who was writing down the Qur'an remembered that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Whomever Khuzayma testified for, it should suffice. The Prophet had given Khuzayma's testimony the weight of two testimonies. This was based on an event that happened while the Prophet, peace be upon him, was alive. The Prophet had borrowed money from a man and then repaid him the debt. After some time, the man came back to the Prophet asking for his money back. The Prophet told the man that he had already repaid him the debt in full. So this man asked the Prophet to bring forward a witness that saw the transaction. However, no one was with a Prophet at the time he repaid the debt. This is when Khuzayma came forward and said, I was present when the Prophet repaid you the money. After the man left, the Prophet turned to Khuzayma and said, I know you were not present when I repaid my debt. No one was there. How could you say that you were with me? Khuzayma looked at the Prophet and said, How can I believe you in all the revelations you brought from the heavens and then disbelieve you about a few coins? Khuzayma, through his wisdom, saw that the Prophet, who is the most honest and truthful man he knew, could not be dishonest about a small worldly matter when he was honest in delivering God's message. When the Prophet saw Khuzayma's deep understanding and belief, he was very pleased and said, Whomever Khuzayma testified for, it should suffice. Now that we know how the Qur'an came to be written, let's take some time to define the Qur'an. If one was to give the most complete and accurate definition of the Qur'an, one would say, the Qur'an is, and then would recite the Qur'an from the very first verse until the very last one. Here is the short definition of the Qur'an given by the scholars. The Qur'an is the words of God that were revealed to the Prophet Muhammad for the purpose of guidance and as a proof of his message. In some sense, the Qur'an resembles all the holy books that were revealed previously, such as the Torah and the Bible. These books were revealed for the purpose of guidance and to clarify God's message. The Qur'an, on the other hand, carries two purposes. The first is to offer guidance and to clarify God's message. And the second is to be a lasting miracle and proof of the Prophet's message. The Torah delivered God's message and set of laws, while Moses' staff was his miracle. The Bible was the book of guidance of Prophet Jesus. Jesus' healing of the blind and the sick was his miracle. The Qur'an combined both the message of God and the miracle of Prophet Muhammad. You may ask, why does this difference exist in the revelations? It is because God's previous messages were meant for a certain period of time and meant for a specific people. The message of the Qur'an, on the other hand, is meant for all humanity and all time until the Day of Judgment. Therefore, its miracle should be ever-present. Any of the Prophet's followers should be able to say, at any point in time, that Muhammad was the Messenger of God, and this here is his miracle. One might say that Jesus is the Prophet of God, however, he or she cannot point and say, this here is his miracle. The miracles of the previous prophets were like a flame that lit brightly. Whoever saw that flame witnessed the miracle. Once the flame extinguished, its power and light could only be transferred by storytelling. We believe in all these miracles because they are mentioned in the Qur'an. However, none of us and none of the Prophet's companions saw these miracles firsthand. Since the miracle of the Qur'an is to last through the end of time, then its revelations should continue till the end of time. It is the gift that keeps on giving and continues to shine through the ages. This requires that not all parts of the Qur'an be explained at the time of the Prophet. God says in the Qur'an, We will show them our signs on the horizon and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth. 41 verse 53 the word it in this verse alludes to the Qur'an. So scientific discoveries will come and continue to come to prove that the Qur'an is the truth.
The Messenger said, My Lord, my people treat this Qur'an as something to be ignored. Chapter 25, verse 30 Do not abandon God's book. Please take a moment to subscribe and to share with your family and friends. Visit us at www.qur'angarden.com